The cruel part of this, of this COVID is not being able to sing, but it's great we've got Jean and Joy, Mr Curtis, keeping his right. Um, a lot of thing, cruel things about this virus, only 20, you know, just how many more would be here if we were able. Um, but we're here, we've got the good is not the enemy of the better, so we've got to appreciate what we've got and able to do this. Uh, see to the funeral arrangements for Alice. Uh, so we're just pleased uh, we're able to do this and join in as best we can with the prayers and just let Jean sing for us. Um, her mother and father, John Nash and Mary Nelson, then the firstborn Rose, who's died. Moira's here happily with us. Jeanette has died, and, and then Margaret was also here, so really, really pleased. And Archie died two years ago, but children, uh, stillborn John and Anne and Diane's happily here with Danny, and uh, also our grandson Anthony, and then others that are joining us through the internet. You're very, very, very welcome. Hopefully, um, you can sing. So we can't sing, but those joining us through the internet, you can raise the roof for this great woman uh, in your own house. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the Lord be with you. My dear brothers and sisters, to prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries, we ask the Lord's mercy. Lord Jesus, you were lifted up to draw all people to yourself. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You showed her the cross to bear our suffering and sinfulness. Christ, have mercy. You opened for your people the way from death into life. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. O 
God, whose nature is always to forgive and to show mercy, we humbly implore you for your servant, Alice Nash Craney, whom you have called to journey to you. And since she hoped and believed in you, grant that she may be led to our true homeland to delight in its everlasting joys through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Please sit for the readings. A reading from the Book of Wisdom. The souls of the virtuous are in the hands of God. No torment shall ever touch them. In the eyes of the unwise, they did appear to die. Their going looked like a disaster. They are leaving us like annihilation, but they are in peace. If they experienced punishment as men see it, their hope was rich with immortality. Slight was their affliction, great will their blessings be. God has put them to the test and proved them worthy to be with him. He has tested, has tested them like gold in a furnace and accepted them as a holocaust. When the time comes for his visitation, they will shine out. As sparks run through the stubble, so will they. They shall judge nations, rule over peoples, and the Lord will be their king forever. They who trust in him will understand the truth. Those who are faithful will live with him in love. For grace and mercy await those he has chosen. The word of the Lord. Response to the psalm is, To you, O Lord, I lift up my soul. Remember your mercy, O Lord, and the love you have shown from of old. In your love, remember me because of your goodness, O Lord. Response Relieve the anguish of my heart and set me free from my distress. See my affliction and my toil, and take all my sins away. Response. Preserve my life and rescue me. Do not disappoint me. You are my refuge. May innocence and uprightness protect me, for my hope is in you, O Lord. Response. Is the Lord and just. Our God has compassion. The Lord protects the simple hearts. I was helpless, so he saved me. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus exclaimed, I bless you, Father, Lord of heaven and of earth, for hiding these things and learning the clever and revealing them to mere children. Yes, Father, for that is what it pleased you to do. Everything has been entrusted to me by my Father, and no one knows the Son except the Father, just as no one knows the Father except the Son and those to whom the Son chooses to reveal him. Come to me, all you who labor and are overburdened, and I will give you rest. 
Shoulder my yoke and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. Yes, my yoke is easy and my burden light. The Gospel of the Lord. Would you sit down, please, a moment? There's someone going to speak on behalf of the family a little bit later, but it takes a wee bit of pressure off me. But uh, well, our memories of Alice, one thing I always think as I was trying to decide the, the prayers of the Mass, there's different um, set prayers for the Mass. The family chose the readings and the psalm and the hymns, but uh, there's different prayers that can be chosen, ones for things like someone who a young person, for a baby, an infant, uh, a priest, a pope, uh, someone who, uh, who had a long illness, someone who had uh, worked tirelessly in the parish, that kind of thing, you know, there are different prayers which can be said, but, but I don't think there's one specifically for Alice, but if, if, if I were pope, you know, you come an age when you think, if I were pope, this is what I would do. I'm sure Alice has her own thoughts, but I would like to put one in uh, a mass for someone who had great joy in their heart, and I, uh, I think that's, I think that's Alice. Um, okay, she was easy, an easy smile, but that's, 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 that's a, that kind of superficial thing, as we know. Um, but that wasn't with her. No, it's an easy smile, but uh, came from a deep place. Um, I bless you, Father. And Lord of heaven and earth, for hiding these things and learning the clever and revealing them to mere children. She had a great joy and she lived by this, uh, the kind of blessing that Jesus uses in the gospel. But it wasn't naive, was it? You know, it was, she knew her trials, you know, uh, not just uh, almost laterally when she wasn't herself, um, but, you know, she knew her trials. And I think that's, I, I think that someone who's aware of real trials in their life, as that goes up, they can also know if they're people of faith, they have a great sense of joy. St. Francis of Assisi, Padre Pio, St. Catherine of Siena, Teresa of Avila, these people had great trials, but they had great joy as well. And I think that's Alice, a sense of joy in her faith that she learned at her, um, from our uh, parents knees uh, of uh, our faith and tried to, to live by it. Uh, we say though, Jesus says, learning the clever, she was very clever, but she didn't, she wasn't a show off clever, she knew she was good at what she did, and, but uh, it didn't mean she ran anyone down or was superior to anyone, but she, uh, she knew what she was good at, and that's a, a, a healthy realism as well. Um, Jesus says, cut, um, um, oh, uh, uh, no one knows the Father except the Son, and those, just as no one knows the Father except the Son, and those to whom the Son chooses to reveal him. So this is a, a lovely phrase for us also, that we learn about our faith from our parents' knees, and obviously a Catholic school as well. We're taught, taught to know Jesus, and knowing Jesus, we get to know the Father. And I think this is what no one knows the Son except the Father, and no one knows the Father except the Son. And it's coming to know Jesus in, uh, in our faith and our prayers, and just week to week devotion, our morning and night prayers, or Sunday Mass for, for Alice, which is so important. And it's great that uh, she was, uh, whenever she was able, able to, to join us uh, in different ways. And but as we, as we get to know Jesus, we get to know ourselves. We get to know ourselves as well, who we are as people who have been created by God, but people who, with our talents and good things we're good at and friendships that we make, uh, with all that is good comes from God, but also we're aware that we're sinners. And so we pray, we thank God for her life, but we thank God uh, for our faith as well. But it's not just um, that, we also pray for a happy repose of her soul, that any sin she may have committed through human frailty will be forgiven the power, through the power of, of Mass. 
And, but our faith tells us that there's more to it than this life. This life is not the end. That this, that it's, our life is hidden with Christ, who is the resurrection and the life. So in coming to know Jesus, we come to know ourselves as true brothers and sisters of Jesus and sons and daughters of the Father, who wishes us all to be with his Son, uh, raised from the dead, and at the right hand of the Father with all the saints. So in coming to know Jesus, we get to know the Father, first of all, and then we know who we are as blessed by God, uh, forgiven by God for any sins we may have committed, but also called to eternal life with, with Jesus in his resurrection. Please stand for the bidding prayers. Response is, Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, hear our prayer. For our dear Alice and all our departed family and friends, that God may welcome them to the happiness and company of the angels and saints. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who bear the cross of pain in mind or body, that they may never feel forsaken. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all carers of the sick, family, friends, doctors, nurses, and full-time carers, that you, that you may have courage and strength in the face of your challenges and compassion in all that you do. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For Alice's friends and family who cannot be here today to say goodbye, that you may join with us in prayer and thanksgiving for her life and achievements. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For family and friends and neighbours who stand with us and support us in times of both joy and sorrow, that you may always have the consolation of Christ's love and friendship in your lives. Response. We pray to the Lord. For all our beloved mothers, grandmothers and mother figures, that you may always know and feel the deep love and appreciation with which you are regarded. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Just close your eyes and add one other intention in your heart. Heavenly Father, hear these prayers and petitions your faithful people place before you. A sparrow does not fall to the ground, but you know it. We are worth hundreds of sparrows. Hear these prayers we make through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Sit down, please. the 
Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. As we humbly present to you these sacrificial offerings, O Lord, for the salvation of your servant, Alice Nash Craney, we beseech your mercy that she who did not doubt your son to be a loving saviour may find in him a merciful judge who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty, Eternal God, through Christ our Lord, for he is the salvation of the world, the life of the human race, the resurrection of the dead, through whom the host of angels adores your majesty and rejoices in your presence forever. May our voices be prayed, joined with theirs in one chorus of exultant praise as we acclaim. you have created rightly gives you praise for through your son our lord jesus christ by the power and working of the holy spirit you give life to all things and make them holy and you never cease to gather a people to yourself so that from the rising of the sun to its setting a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name therefore o lord we humbly implore you by the same spirit graciously make holy these gifts be brought to you for consecration that they may become the body and blood of your son our lord jesus christ at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave a chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Take the third one, please. The mystery of faith. Save us, save of the world, for by your cross and resurrection. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension to heaven, and as we look forward to second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. 
Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church and recognize the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Granted, we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain inheritance with your elect, especially the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, the blessed Joseph, her spouse, we are blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity a pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis, our Pope, Philip, our Bishop, the Order of Bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassionate, merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. Remember your servant Alice, whom you have called from this world to yourself. Grant that she who is united with your son in a death like his may also be one with him in his resurrection, when from the earth he will raise up in the flesh those who have died and transform our lowly body after the pattern of his own glorious body. To our departed brothers and sisters too, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory, when you'll wipe away every tear from our eyes, for seeing you are God as you are, we shall be like you for all the ages and praise you without end through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow in the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours forever and ever. At the Saviour's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let's offer each other a sign of peace. What we've been doing is I'll receive Holy Communion and then everyone else receive Holy Communion on the way out the door. And if those the pallbearers, if they kind of hang about once they've received Holy Communion or a blessing if they're not able to receive Holy Communion for whatever reason. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. I am not much in the grave, but only say the word of my soul shall be healed.
We await the Saviour, the Lord Jesus Christ, who will change our mortal bodies to conform with his glorified body. For those joining us through the internet, I'll say the prayer of the act of, sorry, act of spiritual communion. I'll repeat it and pause in the middle. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament of the altar. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament of the altar. I love you above all things and desire to receive you into my soul. I love you above all things and desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Ventris, 
ventures to It's a time of great thankfulness for those of us who have received Holy Communion and shall, or shortly shall want to thank God for such a precious, pre precious gift. But perhaps there's something about Alice's life you want to remember. Maybe those joining us through internet workers, people who work alongside her. Remember her with a smile, those little episodes, uh, events treasure. Just thank God for it. So good things come from God. Let us pray. Please stand. Lord God, whose Son left us in the sacrament of his body food for the journey, mercifully grant that strengthened by it, our sister Alice may come to the eternal table of Christ, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Right, sit down, please. Someone's going to speak on behalf of the family. It's Sally, isn't it? My dear Mum Alice, you were born on August the 31st, 1937, the fourth of five beautiful daughters to Mary and John Nash. Growing up, you were a very clever girl and a keen scholar. You narrowly missed out on being ducks of St. Patrick's School by a mere half a mark. As well as being a hard-working, high-achieving pupil, you had another more unusual talent. You always prided yourself on your ability as a boxer of all things. Trained in a makeshift ring in your living room by your father, John, you were so good that he often compared you to the famous Scottish flyweight champion, Benny Lynch. You took no snatch from any of the local laddies. They were all feet of you. In stark contrast to your ability in the ring, you also loved to speak French and read poetry. You enjoyed nothing more than reciting your favourite verse with great clarity and gusto. However, in the words of one of your classmates, you had a voice that would wake the dead. You blossomed into an incredibly beautiful and refined young woman, inevitably caught the eye of many suitors. However, it was actually Craney who won your heart and you were married in St. Patrick's Hall on October the 29th, 1962. Yours was a very happy marriage, punctuated by the natural ups and downs of all human relationships. You were alike in many ways, your core principles and values were well matched, but you were opposites in other respects. Whereas you were a fastidious and proud housekeeper, Archie had a penchant for collecting old car parks. Despite your differences, it was always clear throughout your whole life together how much you both deeply cared for each other. You did a fine job of nursing my dad through his final years, and I know how grateful he was for your love, compassion, and kindness. In his words, you were some dame. Your early married life was not plain sailing. You sadly lost two babies while only in your 20s, a son John and later a daughter Anne, who were both still born, and you resigned yourself to the fact that you may never be blessed with children. However, at the age of 44, you became a mother when I was born. 
and what an outstanding mother you were. I could not have wished for or dreamed of any better. You were what many may term a natural mother, patient, gentle, loving, and even tempered. I often told her that you would have made a first class teacher, such as your gift of patience and an ability to see the vulnerability and beauty in others. You were a true nurturer. In your presence, my whole life through, I have always felt secure, loved, and safe in the knowledge that I could share anything with you, no matter how good or bad. As a child, you always told me, even if you've something, even if you've done something bad, don't be afraid to tell me. I will always love you and I will always help you, no matter what the situation is. This is something I now say to my own sons, and I hope that we will have the same bond of trust and confidence that you and I have shared. Speaking of my own sons brings me to the point where you became a grandmother, first to Danny and later to Anthony. They were the loves of your life, and your face would light up at the mere mention of their names, of what happy times you had with your two boys' mum. One particular memory stands out in my mind. Danny had stayed with you for a sleepover one Friday night, as he often did, and I called the next morning to see how things were, but the phone rang out unanswered. A little later, you called back. Oh, sorry, missed your call, you said. You were in the kitchen lifting the European Cup, and Danny was making a speech to the fans. That was the kind of granny you were, full of life, energy, ideas, and fun. Your boys adored you, and they always will. Your sisters, Rose, Moira, Jeanette, and Margaret were your best friends. Over the years, I have listened to many wonderful, funny, and sentimental stories of your exploits together. You were all incredibly close, and this has always given me great pleasure and comfort to know that you have had their support, friendship, love, and companionship your whole life long. You loved each other, every one of your sisters, with your whole heart. You always told me how much you enjoyed your working life, and I loved listening to your stories of when you worked in Glasgow. You were a shorthand typist and a bookkeeper, meticulous in your work, and with exceptionally high standards. As a result, you were held, always held in extremely high esteem by your colleagues and employers. In your later years, you worked as a secretary for Croy Community Centre, as well as doing voluntary work at the youth club, Holy Cross School and the church. When you finally threw in the towel, you were well over retirement age. Finally, it was time for you and Archie to spend some time together, driving each other up the wall. You loved animals and children and such a natural way with both. When you were a young woman, newly married, the local children would bring you all manner of stray and orphaned creatures. You took them in, cared for them and found them new homes, or sometimes you even kept them yourself. You had a wonderful talent for making children laugh, and they always flocked to you. I've always felt that you can tell an awful lot about a person from how they treat children, animals and the vulnerable. It was certainly true for you, Mum. You were good and kind, and as anyone who knows you will agree, you had an exceptionally naughty sense of humour, which we all enjoyed. I have never been more proud of you than I was in your final few weeks. Your illness came upon you seemingly from nowhere, but you managed to remain calm, dignified and good-humoured, even when you were extremely weak and unwell. You sang the praises of all those who attended to you. You were always polite, respectful and optimistic, even when you were in great pain. I was, and I am immensely pr proud of your bravery. You and I have had 39 wonderful years together. It gave me great satisfaction to know that you had the chance to share so many important milestones. My school days, my graduation, my wedding day, and the birth of your two grandsons. We have had the most amazing times together, visited beautiful places, laughed until we cried, and cried in each other's arms. Yours has been a rich, full life, truly well lived, with not a minute wasted. One of my favourite memories was of the time we visited Celtic Park for your 80th birthday. You bought a scarf, bantering with a vendor that if he were a true Celt, he would give it to you for nothing. As we sat in the stands, you got so worked up when the opposition team scored that you grabbed the man in front, shook him, then slapped him around the head before exclaiming, Oh, I'm so sorry, son. I don't know what came over me. Mum, you have been the sunshine in my life. 
my anchor in life's ocean. I can truly say I have never loved anyone the way I have loved you or been loved by anyone the way you have loved me. It gives us all great comfort now to think of you with your own mummy and daddy, your sisters Rose and Janet, my dad Archie and your two babies all together again. If anyone deserves a place in paradise, mum, it is surely you. And I know, as you have taught me, that one day we will all be together again. And what a day that will be. Goodbye for now, my darling mum. We will carry you with us for eternity. Sally Ann, that was nice. Sally, that was good. Please stand for these final prayers. With faith in Jesus Christ, we must reverently bury the body of our sister. Let us, believe, pray, let us pray with confidence to God, in whose sight all creation lives, that He will raise up in holiness and power the mortal body of our sister and command her soul to be numbered among the blessed. May God grant her a merciful judgment, deliverance from death, and pardon of sin. May Christ, the Good Shepherd, carry her home to be at peace with the Father. May she rejoice forever in the presence of the Eternal King and in the company of all the saints. Receive our soul and present.
To you, O Lord, we commend the soul of Alice Nash Craney, your servant. In the sight of this world, she is now dead, and in your sight may she live forever. Forgive whatever sins she committed through human weakness, and in your goodness grant her everlasting peace. We ask this through Christ our Lord. In peace let us take Alice to her place of rest. So we'll be singing some hymns as I'll offer communion at the screen here for those that can manage. And then if the, the bearers if they can hang about. Oh, 
Jesus, open wide thy heart and let me rest therein. For weary is my stricken soul of sorrow.